Hey, good morning, Gateway. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, w- would you stand with me? We're gonna we're gonna just jump right into praise this morning. We're gonna sing to the the Lion and the Lamb, the King of Kings, and um, let's just shake off everything that maybe we brought in here with us. Any kind of any kind of weight that we're carrying this morning, and let's just point our hearts and our minds to to the glory of God this morning and. Give him the praise that he's due. I sing it, he's coming on the clouds. Here we go. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. His broken arms declare. I tell you what, it is an an awesome opportunity to gather together as God's people and to lift up his name, amen? Great to be in God's house. My name is Carl Shad, I'm a senior pastor here. And this is Lucas Ruckley, the founder and leader of of Love the Loose. So great to have you here, brother. And today, 
today we're really excited because today is going to be an opportunity for us to celebrate how God worked in a mighty way yesterday through Love the Lou, through Unity in the Lou. And, and just real quick, I, I wanted you guys to know how, how many different projects were going on, some of the leaders that were part of that. Our own um, Laura and Ben Adala, they led a, a Garden City project um, down in, in North City. It was incredible. We had Harris Jeff, who, who co-led with John Tariq Liado to lead some, some projects at a home. Rita Kirk helped to co-lead a project as well. Nathan Reedy and Jared Kendrick and Stephen Ryan. And then Tara Boggs led a, a quilting team right here at Gateway Christian Church to make grocery bags for people in the city. So pretty incredible. A lot of folks leverage their gifts in different ways in order to bring glory to God and to, to serve Him, to serve Him and be the hands and feet of Jesus. And it was a great day, wasn't it, Lucas? Yeah? It was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was awesome. And we're so thankful to each and every one of you. And can we just for a moment give God praise for His good work and for your involvement, your investment, and your prayers. Lucas, will you pray for us this morning? Jesus, we, uh, we come before you this morning. Uh, these songs are our prayers, and uh, we, we are bowing before you as king. We're surrendering our lives once again to you. So we ask that you would speak to us, that yes. you fill us up, that you would send us out of this building uh, on mission with purpose and uh, with your love and grace. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Let's continue to worship the Lord.
Well, you know, I, I have to imagine that there are some of us um, maybe fighting a battle or two or just maybe freshly come out of a battle. And I think when we, probably when we sing a song that talks about dry bones, we think of people who are completely separated from God, people who are um, completely maybe void or just don't know anything about the love of God. And like, that's the only way you could be completely dead and dry, right? But the truth is, a lot of times we go through hard stuff, we go through life and, and things just kind of beat us down and we don't even realize how dry we've become. We don't even realize how um, destitute and how just completely dead our our joy and our, our life through Jesus has become until maybe we encounter someone who has that joy and has that life and we can see, see a difference and we go, gosh, I can remember feeling like that. I can remember being like that. And I think um, this next song is, is a great reminder for those of us who maybe have gone through tough times or, or maybe even just haven't necessarily gone through anything traumatic, but have just seen the, the daily walk of life just kind of carry you into a place where you're removed from that joy and that passion and that light. And that God can, God can battle back to the place where we're encountering that joy daily and that we're living in that peace and that freedom. So as we sing this next song, I just want to encourage you to go ahead and lift that weight and, and let that let God's peace and his joy bring you back into his presence this morning. Because the truth is we don't have to fight the battle on our own. We just place it in his hands and sing it out. Here we go. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. When all I see is a mountain, you see a mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I'm safe with you. So when I fight, I fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. There's nothing impossible for you stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God.
Well, it feels great to come together and worship and just lay all of our burdens at the foot of the cross. And we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to praise. But for now, why don't you take a seat? We're going to actually move into uh, a very important part of our faith here at, at, at Gateway Christian Church, which is uh, the remembrance of what Jesus did on that cross and uh, the taking of communion. And uh, this, is, uh, this is something that we do every week. If you're, if you're new to the faith or you're still kind of exploring and not really sure about this whole Jesus and God thing, we'd love to have that conversation with you maybe after the service uh, up front or at the Welcome Center. We'd love to kind of walk you through what this means and, and why we do it. But uh, the short story there is that Jesus uh, died on the cross for us. He took our sins. He took the punishment that was meant for us wiped our slate clean, gave us a fresh start and a way to be reconciled back to a perfect sinless God, even though we were sinful, even though uh, we had all fallen short of the glory of God. Jesus in his uh, flawlessness and his perfect walk uh, laid that down at the cross in, in exchange for our lives. And so he asked us to remember that. He told us to, to remember that and to honor that and, and, uh, to consider the cost of that. And so that's something that we're, we're going to do now. If you're, if you're at home, uh, I encourage you, you can go ahead and get the elements of communion right now. And, uh, if you haven't already, and if you're here in the room, hopefully you grab one on the way in. And uh, if you would pray with me and then we'll continue to worship. God, we, we are so thankful for all that you've done. We're so thankful for Jesus and the cross. We're thankful that you loved us enough to make a way back to you. We're thankful that even in our sin, even in our shortcomings and all the ways that we've turned from you and failed and um, that we just don't measure up and we just can't earn a place next to you. We can't earn a place in your presence. We're thankful that we don't have to. We're thankful that you love us enough that you had a plan all along, a plan that would require great sacrifice, a plan that, that paid a price too great for any of us to pay. And God, we're thankful that uh, you knew exactly what it would take to bring us back to you and you were willing to pay that price. You were willing to go through the suffering. You were willing to go through all that it took on the cross to wipe our slate clean, to give us a clean start and a life of freedom that we can walk through with Jesus. And we're thankful for that. We remember that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Fails me. 
Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your love and for who you are. We thank you for Jesus and the cross, and we love you back. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have a seat. As uh, Pastor Carl said a little bit earlier, um, we had a great, great day yesterday of uh, service to our community. We were um, all over North St. Louis, and we were just, uh, you know, being the hands and feet of Jesus, it's, it's, it's never more rewarding, I think, when, when you're part of a church family than when you get to see uh, that church family out actually physically making a difference in the lives of other people and just uh, moving outside the walls of the church and moving outside of our normal routine and doing things that you can, you can instantly see the impact of, of what you're doing. And um, that's not always the case. Um, there's a lot of things that we pour into here at Gateway that we don't get to see the immediate results. We don't get to see instantly how that's impacted lives and, and what God's doing through our generosity and through our sacrifices that we make. Um, but yesterday was one of those uh, wonderful exceptions where we got to see that happen. Um, but outside of Swerve, outside of a Swerve day, uh, God is doing so many things through Gateway and, and so consistently um, that it, you don't have to look very hard to see what God's doing and to see the impact uh, that the generosity of those here at Gateway makes. Uh, so just know that as this morning as we give, um, that it's, it's empowering uh, this church to be a light in this community and, and all over the world uh, through local and uh, missions around the world uh, that are affecting lives and just doing things way bigger than one person, way bigger than we could do on our own. And so uh, I just want to make sure that we all uh, know that there are several ways that you can give this morning. Um, you can give uh, through the, a box at the entrance or exits on your way in or out. Um, you can also give on our app. There's a, a tab on there for giving, also on our website. Um, or you can drop off a, uh, uh, an envelope at the, at the office. Uh, so would you pray with me for the offering? Father, we're so thankful for what you've given us, thankful for the way that you've blessed this church and blessed all of us individually. And um, God, we're just thankful that we have the opportunity to give back, that we have the opportunity to partner with you and what you're doing at Gateway and in this community and around the world. Uh, God, we're humbled to think that we could even play a small part in, in the amazing things that you do uh, through those who love you and those who are faithful with what you've given us. And we're thankful to be uh, called sons and daughters, and we're thankful that um, you love us enough to, to make a way to bring us into the story of what's happening here in St. Louis. We, we, uh, we love you back, and we're thankful uh, for all that you do and continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. We do have a few other things going on here at Gateway, and so if you would turn your attention to the screens, and we'll tell you all about it. Hello, and thank you for joining us in person and online for our worship service today. Please remember to use the Church Center app to check in for the service or class you are attending. If you have prayer requests, need help, or want to offer help to others, please go to our website and fill out our online Connect card. There are three different ways you can give. First, you can send in a check to the office through the mail. Second, you can go on our website, gccstl.org, or the Gateway Plus app, and go to Give. You'll find a form there for you to fill out. Third, if you're here worshiping with us today, you can drop it in the offering boxes located by the doors of the worship center. Exciting news, Gateway's elders will be taking turns leading us through a five-week sermon series starting July 18th on Following Jesus. Be sure to invite others to join you in person or online. We have fun news. Our Wednesday Night Life Fall program will kick off this year with a talent show on Wednesday, August 25th, along with a church-provided grilled dinner for all. There will be a limited number of acts in our show. More details will be sent out via email on how to sign up for your act. Start thinking creatively now. Want to get to know other adults? Uh. Like eating together, either in someone's home or at a restaurant? I am starving. I haven't had lunch since yesterday. Then you'll enjoy our Dinner with Friends program, launching this fall. Info will be shared soon on how to sign up for monthly fellowship meals with others. If you want to stay up to date with everything happening here at Gateway, check out our website at gccstl.org or find us on social media. Right now, 
Join us as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear a powerful message from God's Word. Praise. Amen. I do it. We got the gateway swerve. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this is a video camera. <laughs> oh, it was a good time. It was a great time, actually. It was a great time to serve. And I, I want to say we're going to celebrate Swerve this morning, and we're really excited to have some leaders who, who participate and led different groups. We've got Laura and Pastor Ben Odala, and they led one of the City Garden um, projects, which was just incredible. So thank you, Laura, for that. And then Harris Schiff co-led with John Trigliato, and then also his wife, Natalie Schiff, who said she wasn't going to come up here on stage. And yet she is here. Hey, Amen. Let's give her a big hand. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, thanks so much, uh, Lucas. Lucas, the founder of, of Love the Lou, and really for coordinating the whole effort. Can we give God praise for Lucas and <laughs> Elena? And there's so many, so many others. It, you know, as, as I was able to go to different sites, um, it was cool to see. It reminded me of, of what the Apostle Paul promised, what God promised through the Apostle Paul in, in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that, that we're God's masterpiece is handiwork and that he prepared good works in advance for us to do. And just to get a sense where everything was happening, so many exciting things, um, just to get a sense that this is something that God had planned long in advance, mm-hmm. right? God had planned and prepared this. I mean, you planned and you planned and you planned, but God had this planned for a long time for us to step into this good work. It was really exciting. So there was a lot of planning and preparation and, and Lucas specifically for you, a lot of planning, a lot of coordinating. But, but Saturday morning got off to kind of a, a wild start after a night of storms. I mean, right? Did anybody else get affected by the storms here? Yeah, did, did, did uh, Swerve and Love oh, Lou get oh, affected? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I always uh, struggle with uh, praying for the weather. Like, it, <laughs> it kind of seems like, like I'm bothering God or something, you sure. know, like it's, <laughs> it's trivial to him. Uh, but we, we had a lot of preparation going into Swerve, and at 7 a.m., uh, the forecast looked uh, horrendous. The skies were, were awful. Um, and so I started, like, you know, one of those prayers of, like, hey, God, if it's not too big of a deal, uh, you know, like, could you? But then I got to thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? Like, like I do think, first of all, he can handle this. Yeah, amen. So I can approach the throne pretty confidently with that, but then 
this is kind of a big deal to us. Like we, we've got a lot of things uh, we'd like to do for his kingdom. And so at nine in the morning, guys, the sun comes out, all the clouds are gone. And I was like, you're just showing off now. Like this is, <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. like it, it should have rained and, and it should have been a terrible day. That's what we're told. Um, but it wasn't. No. It was really good. Yeah, incredible, incredible. For- and there, there, were, there were some surprise projects on the fly, right? I mean, we had a, we had a tree that got knocked down in the middle of the street. Uh, Jared Kendrick uh, was very happy to, to whip out the chainsaw and, and get to work on that. And then my son and Nicholas Ryan uh, uh, were also happy to take a machete and uh, a sawzall and really anything that was sharp and, and help uh, cut that tree down. Kids and machetes. I mean, what's, yeah. that's good life. That's good, good stuff, story. right? Um, so I'm, I'm thinking about our awesome panel here, willing to, to you know, got to swerve. Um, what, was, what was your favorite part about serving, swerving in, in our city for, for some of you? And anybody can answer. So a favorite part. What was, what was something that really stuck, stuck out to you? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed just being there, with the energy of everybody. Um, people from our church and people from the community just together. Um, Jared's energy on the chainsaw was, was pretty impressive. <laughs> Um, and, but just, it seemed like everybody was just really, really like happy to be participating Yeah. and really, um, you could just kind of feel like everybody felt like a really sense of uh, purpose that this is what we're supposed to be doing and the people of the community helping right alongside us. Um, there was, you know, there was that fellowship and brotherhood, but also like, uh, just a lot of joy in, in serving. And it was, you know, it was kind of like too bad when it was over. It was kind of like, I mean, we were physically tired, but like spiritually, you kind of like wanted to keep going. So it, yeah. it was just really uh, a re-energizing experience for yeah. me. So. I like that. A lot of, a lot of energy. And you, you did, you sensed um, a great sense of community and unity as we all just shoulder to shoulder got in and, and did God's work. How about, how about, down on the, the other end with Pastor Benno and Laura. So yesterday, like the whole day was my favorite. I don't even hey. know. <laughs> it's so hard to choose one thing. Um, but I really, really enjoyed meeting Cynthia and her mom, Dolores. <laughs> they are such an amazing pair. They are so much fun. They keep you on your toes. And I think Dolores might even made Jeremiah blush at some point. <laughs> she definitely did. It was just so much fun being out there with them and just seeing Cynthia walk around because she has been so devoted to this project and she has such a vision and she's so driven. She has a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> for this garden yeah. and it's beautiful and she invited me into her home the night before to watch it and we ended up talking about Jesus and I'm not going to go all into what we talked about because I don't have her permission but um, it was just a beautiful conversation and a beautiful time um, a fellowship even starting the night before. And then as you were saying with the storms that happened, I mean, we had downed electrical lines in our backyard and our side yard. I didn't know what was gonna happen, if I was even gonna make it to Swerve that day. Yeah. Um, but when you just push through the enemy's attacks, it's like God's telling you, okay, you need to push through this. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> and so look what happens. It, just, to, just to build on, on some of the beautiful things that Laura mentioned, um, Cynthia is, her name is Cynthia McRae, and she lives, she's one of these people of peace that lives in North City, and she had a vision. She saw an empty lot, and she said, hey, the empty lot where they, they kind of raised the house, and they cleared the lot, and they, had, they now have grass. She, she actually said, that, that was great. It was great to have a cleared lot, and the house that was shelled out, have it gone. She said, but at the same time, she knew that it could be more. <laughs> She knew that it could be more, and God gave her a vision of what else it could be, and so she wanted to create, and she has, this beautiful garden on this corner lot in, in North City right there on Cook Avenue, and, and she says part of it, her vision was that she recognizes that within her city block and around North City, there are a lot of folks that have mental illness, and for them to be able to go to a place and literally stop and smell the flowers 
and find a place of tranquility to reconnect with the Lord. She says that was a part of her vision to create that city garden right there on the corner of Cook Avenue. So pretty, pretty incredible, pretty incredible vision. So how about you guys? Anybody have a, a person or favorite moment that maybe stuck out to you? I was fortunate to, um, to hook up with uh, Ed Gray and uh, just had some really great conversations, not, not all related necessarily to the project or even to, to, to church, but just a, a good opportunity to just kind of man to man, you know, um, he's a very similar guy to me in, in some ways at least, and we, we kind of bonded over some of those things and, and talked about some of the, the things he's doing. And one of the things that really impressed me about him though is, because uh, Lucas had told me a little about Ed before, we began the project. He was like, this guy's a machine. He's a work machine. <laughs> he really is like, he's here. And then five seconds later, he's like, where'd he, where'd he go? He's working on something else. And then, but just even just walking down the street, the people of the community know who he is and respect him. There was, you know, there was a, a group of young teenagers walking by and it was like, he knew every single one of them. They knew him, had a real pleasant exchange. And you can, you can just tell that he's, um, he's a really good man doing you know, doing God's work in his community, a very um, kind of a quiet, humble way of doing it. And yeah. uh, really, um, I just really have a lot of respect for him. So, you know, hopefully we're able to, to, you know, maybe partner up on some things in the future too. Now, I think Isaiah, your son went, went as well, right? So Natalie, how, what was Isaiah's impression of, of Swerve, him being able to be out there with, with dad? And First everyone? of all, there were so many awesome things about going back to the mm. site that we had originally been okay. to the very first time. You know, the very first time, I have to say, was somewhat awkward because I didn't know what to do. And when you don't know what to do, it's kind of like you feel like you're just in the way. Um, but Harris and I were talking about this, that any help is huge help. You know, even if you are walking around asking somebody else, um, you know, if they need a certain tool or even just moving like a small pile of mulch somewhere else where it needs to be, um, but telling Isaiah, this was the spot. Remember back then a few years ago when we came and there was nothing here that we were like creating those rows for the garden, um, putting the mulch on there. Remember there was a building here, a house or some kind of building. It's not there anymore. And then Lucas or Pam maybe or Teresa, one of the three awesome people leading, um, explained that we had people take down the building, that the bricks from the building were kept mm. and are gonna be used to create a even bigger, more t tranquil spot for people to just sit and, and enjoy the peace of God. Amen. And you know, like letting him hear that, reminisce on what we had started with, um, see how it's grown up and then to continue to work on it. I do think that there was some sort of appreciation um, for everybody who has done the work in his heart, as well as seeing how God has worked through us to help this community. Amen. So that was really cool, for sure. Very cool. Yeah. Now, now Lucas, you know, they've, they've mentioned different people from, from Ed to Cynthia, um, Pam, Teresa, all these different relationships, friendships that um, were sparked by an, by an event like partnering with Love Lou and a, a day like Swerve. How, how can folks folks like the panel here, and then really anybody else that served, how can they continue to nurture those friendships and build on those relationships throughout the year, not just on one day? Yeah, one of the things that uh, was unique with this year is that all of the projects that we did um, were actually connected to people that are living in the neighborhood, kind of a boots on the ground mm. approach. And so these people of peace are going to be working today on the neighborhood. Uh, they're going to continue working in the gardens, Ed and Cynthia and Janice and Tawana and all of the different people that you were able to meet um, are gonna be down there this week. Uh, so I can, I can make you uh, an offer here. If, you, if the weather, if the weather uh, kept you away um, or if you're busy, you know, had something better to do, you're on vacation or whatever, uh, join us this Saturday because uh, we'll be doing it again. Um, we will uh, continue to um, uh, connect people that, uh, that are in the county into these people of peace's lives. Uh, and so the projects will continue to uh, get done. 
So, so they remain, which means we can remain connected to them. We can, yeah. we can find ways. And, and you're a great bridge builder to some of those amazing relationships and friendships that, um, that were started, I think, for a lot of folks yesterday. Um, you, you've, you brought this up that there are some perceptions, perceptions about North City, really just about the city in general, and, and certainly sometimes some even fear that's connected with that. And I'm curious for, for the panel uh, was, was there anything that surprised you about the city? I mean, there's perceptions that people have and that we all carry. Was there anything that surprised you about being able to serve in the city? And I'm going to ask Pastor Benno, was there anything that really was surprising to you about being able to serve in the city? Um, I can say everything was fantastic uh, yesterday. Um, you know, we do things like that in in Haiti, um, I'm very happy, thankful to see how people um, been connect and a lot of different people. Yeah. And, and I can say when we have uh, uni unity and we can have, we can do a lot of things together. And it's so wonderful to meet a lot of different people yesterday, and special, especially the grandma, I call her grandma, Do Dolores. <laughs> um, he looked like my mom, oh. um, the same age, and he made me thinking and miss my mom, yeah. um, asking me a lot of questions about with Haiti, and I saw joy, and, and he has a lot of joy. Um, and one thing yesterday, I'm very thankful for. Before I left, Cynthia asking me, you know, I would like to visit your church. Um, I said, when you would like to do that? He said, soon, I would like to visit your church. You know, when we do things like that, we have a lot of people. People, some people see what we did. And it's so, so, so grateful and to be, to be proud with, with that. And, Hoping. So wonderful for me. I enjoy that and to do that. Amen. Amen. And if you had an opportunity to see Pastor Benno behind a wheelbarrow, he was running circles around everybody the whole day. So he was, he was very fast, uh, very, very speedy. How, how about the rest of you? How did, how did maybe God open your eyes and show you something, show you something new as you served other? In what, in what ways did God open your eyes as you served? For me, I think one of the um, the more pleasing aspects was in the morning I was at the one site and then, you know, we were kind of making our way over for, um, going to do the lunch at the garden. And when I arrived, there was still, uh, quite a bit of work to do because there was a tree that was down and, and Jared had been, uh, taking it, you know, taking it down with his chainsaw for a while. But, um, just to see the other people, like the people of the community, that it wasn't just something where we're coming in and, fixing this for people, but to see their participation and enthusiasm, uh, especially we're talking like young people, like, you know, 10 to 15 years old, um, young kids that are, that they were not only participating in the project, but also it seemed like they had something going on. I don't know, uh, even what it was, but it seemed like they had like, kind of like a little school thing going on up there in the garden as well. And just to see their energy and, and enthusiasm and like their gratitude for us being there was, um, like I say, it was, it was really um, just re-energizing for me, for, for my faith and for just my feelings about this program. And, and uh, I also want to give a big, uh, big shout out to Lucas because um, he puts a ton of work into this and he's very, he's very humble about it. Amen. But, uh, you know, he's obviously like working on this around the clock. So, yeah. 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 How on the other end, Laura, how did God open your eyes? I'm curious. Yeah, so you talk about, you know, maybe fear, right? And um, just preconceived notions and things like that. Um, when I went down the night before, I went by myself. Well, I say the night. It was not night. It was evening. It was 4 o'clock. And I went down by myself to, to meet Cynthia. And I got there early. And I had cardboard boxes that I needed to unload. And so I thought I'd just do that until she got there. And so it was probably about 20 minutes later, but there were um, a group of men right behind my van and they were hanging out and talking and, um, and it was very lively, 
very lively. And um, kind of reminiscent, I remembered kind of in Haiti that um, sometimes the conversations just get really emotional. It's not that it's bad. It's not like bad talk or fights are about to break out, but it's just more elevated than what we're used to, to seeing, right? And, um, but, you know, I'll, I'll admit it, even still, even after living in Haiti and being around the culture like that, you still, fear tries to creep in, you know, fear tries to creep in, and I'm not proud of it, but um, it's what we do with that. So, as I'm unloading my boxes, um, you know, they're just right there, and I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, I, I, I tried to make eye contact, and I made eye contact with this one guy. I was like, hey, how you doing today? And his, his tough kind of demeanor suddenly just went teddy bear. Oh. And he was like, hey, hi, hi, we're good. How are you doing? I was like, I'm good. Just unloading some boxes. <laughs> and so, you know, and then literally all the fear just melted away because, you know, you're, you're there for the Lord, and there's really, he'll tell you over and over, I don't need to be scared. Yeah. This is God. the only thing I need to be scared of is God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Amen. I tried to take a note from my husband there on that. <laughs> Amen. Well, and we're we're scared of the unknown often, and so uh, the thing that I've seen that that Jesus does for us is He pushes us to know others. Uh, so that fear disappears, but it's that perfect love driving out fear. Exactly. And so, yeah, when we dive in to projects like these, and once again, the encouragement is let's not let this be just a once a year kind of thing. Uh, let's continue uh, with momentum. And, I, and I, like, I like what you're saying. Being on site typically gives us insight in, in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, when you think about it, for you, you know, perfect love drives out fear. What are some other areas, or, or how did God reveal himself? Or what are some things that you learned about God by serving others in, in, in North City? Just serving, serving others. What did, what did God reveal about himself? I'm interested in. Natalie, did you feel, feel like you get a different view or picture of God's heart? A couple times, uh, starting with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that we all have not experienced that before where the clouds open up and it's just like very godly <laughs> presence is there. Um, it just happened to be perfect timing. You know, like it was, I think everybody was probably sitting at home going, is this happening? <laughs> um, yeah. But as I was working in the garden, I was with Isaiah on the blackberry awning. What do you, I don't know what you call sure. that. Um, it's like an arch with all the blackberry vines. Very thorny, by the way. Um, there was this really thick weed, the weed itself wasn't thick, but there was so much of it, just kind of strangling the, the good fruit vine. And so we worked pulling that off. And I think that really could be seen as a metaphor for how Satan gets into our lives and weaves himself into our lives um, very deeply. And, you know, you don't see it at first. And at first, when Teresa kind of took me over there, it was like, oh, yeah, and all this needs to go on this, and that, you know. And I was like, mm -hmm, I don't know what's, you know, like exactly what I'm supposed to be taking out. But once I actually got in there and started looking and realized how, like, which vine I could be pulling off and not killing the plant, <laughs> um, yeah. actually helping it, um, it really goes to show that, you know, God does use us and each other to help kind of pull Satan out. And mm. that is so important for us to be connected in each other's lives, to know enough about each other, to know what we're struggling with, to go, hey, sister, hey, brother, you know, like with love, um, we need to talk about this. And however you're handling it is either, you know, a way that we, I can encourage you and support you, or it's a way that I can help lead you in a different, uh, more biblical way. And by pulling those vines out of the blackberry vines, I was kind of thinking about that. And some of the vines were a lot harder to pull off, you know, and just did not want to budge. And I really had to work at it, but I also had to be very gentle because I didn't want to kill the actual fruit vine. Yeah. So it was, it was a really cool metaphor at that time for me to be working with. Well, that'll preach, amen, church? I mean, <laughs> all right, let's pray and go home. Okay, this, that's, <laughs> Natalie, that was awesome. Pastor Benno, how about you? How, how did you see, you, you know, you've, you've, you've lived abroad. Um, you bring kind of an international perspective to a, to a place like, like North City. How did God reveal himself 
that you saw um, God in a fresh way, in a new way, in an affirming way. Um, um, I can say God said in the, in the world we need to be a light. Mm. Um, when, when, people see, when people see the light on you, and when people see uh, what, you, what you did, what you do, or what, when people see your action, when people see um, um, what you, when you, when you go somewhere or where you live, um, to be an example, or to be, a, you know, pe people watching in your neighborhood, whatever you go. And people, people watching, or even people um, see, need to see um, Jesus on you, or light yeah. on you. And that, that is a good impact to when people can see different. You know, I've been in, in Haiti a lot of different places. A lot of different places. Some, we have good people, some lot of bad people too. And, you know, some people said, oh, um, you know, it's so different. People, it, it's good when people see different. Um, it's so thankful for me to, to see how God moving in, in, in that city. You know, some people said, oh, uh, I sh I've been scared. I, I think I can't go. I'm not going. And, I'm, and, but if, if I said, oh, I don't think I can do this, or I can't go, what, who, who going to do this? Yeah. That is my job, and it's your job to go. He said, go and make disciples. And it's gonna so hard, so difficult time, and difficult where you live or where, where you go. But you need to hear God, and God has a lot of plans. And it's my mission, it's your mission, and try to do what God calls us to do. And we need to. And we need to hold and say, okay, God will, will hire us. Send me, I'm ready for that. Amen. Amen. We need to. Yes. Every time we will have a good time, so bad time, but we need to enjoy with people and and are ready to to put head to work together, to go forward, not go back, to go forward. Amen. So uh Benno's talking about that light um that happens when we're together in unity, when we're working together. And one thing that happened yesterday after everybody left and right before the storm rolled in. Um, I had two neighbors who didn't join in with us. They didn't come to the meal. They just kind of sat on the porch and watched. Uh, but afterwards they came and they had some house projects that they needed done. And they said, hey, do you think you'll have a group like that come down again? It just so happens we do. Uh, and so to, you, to what you're saying, that light, even though they didn't join in, uh, was so attractive that when everybody was gone, they came and said, hey, can, can we get involved in this? Uh, and it's, that is so, I, I know it's just, it was just like three hours. It was, you know, three or four hours of hanging out, being together, and yet uh, that unity, that John 17, we were one, uh, preached uh, to the whole neighborhood. So good job, guys. Good job. Amen. So, you know, thinking about that, how does, so how does partnerships with like Love Lulu and, and three-hour events like Swerve and people participating. Any of us that participate or look to, to maybe get more engaged on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, um, how do events like Swerve, Partnerships with Love Blue, how do, they, how do they help us make us one in Christ that really kind of breaks down all the barriers that we see, you know, with, you know across county barriers or cultural barriers or racial barriers um, denominational barriers. We, we saw other churches that weren't coordinated necessarily through Love Loop participating, right? So how, how do these events and partnerships with Love Loop, how do they help to make us, build that bridge to make us one in Christ? 
There was a moment yesterday, uh, and if you didn't get to be a part of it, I wish, I, I, I wish it for you, uh, but there was a moment when it was about noon, uh, most of us were kind of done with our project. Some, of, some, some people were still being bossed around by Cynthia, so you guys didn't <laughs> get over. But uh, uh, we circled up, and, uh, and while we're getting in that circle, you know, people are trying to decide how big the circle is going to be. So, you know, you've got like ovals happening all over the place. And while we're getting there, it was just this beautiful uh, image of the kingdom of God. Because you had black and white, you had city, county, you had gateway, you had, you had churches joining in that yeah. we didn't even know who they were. Yeah. Uh, we had neighbors, uh, we had young and old. I mean, just, just every tongue and tribe and nation is what Amen. it felt like. And, and we circle and you're looking, you're looking around and you know we're going to pray and everybody's kind of hungry. And, uh, but there's just that pause of this isn't happening in St. Louis. Uh, this picture isn't uh, happening on a regular basis. And then the challenge that I have for us is uh, how could we get this to where it became a normal thing? Yeah. Uh, what would it look like? It's obviously going to be more than once a year, uh, but, but if the church doesn't lead out with this kind of work, I don't think that the, the other city entities and organizations uh, we'll be able to do it. It's not something that can be manufactured. And so it's only because of Jesus that we could be in that circle together. And then we pray. And the prayer, the prayer is simply, God, you did this. Like we didn't, uh, we didn't have a day designed to say, okay, let's get 10 black people and 10 white people and smash them. You know, like it, it wasn't a, a strategy like that. It's a let's serve Let's, let's that unity, that becoming one, uh, uh, be light to neighbors, and let's see what happens. And God showed up. Amen. Amen. You know, afterwards, we went, many of us went to um, an event called Unity in the Loop, put on by St. Louis Reconciliation Network, um, on, at, called Friends Temple, right on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. And um, one of the individuals that, that shared a prayer, one of the pastors from the area, he shared a prayer and he simply said he had, he had the, the privilege of being able to be a part of a, a committee that actually over 2020 um, sat on a council with Sam Page. Sam Page, we all know who Sam Page is in our area. And um, obviously they're talking about COVID and navigating through that. And this individual asked, um, with COVID, everything happening, this, individual, this pastor asked, what can the churches do? And he was thinking more engaging of what can we do COVID from a COVID standpoint. But Sam Page pivoted and he said, he says, if, if the churches could help us with some of the, the unity and the racial tension that exists in St. Louis area, because Sam Page, and I don't know where Sam Page is, is, is in his faith or, or whatever, but Sam Page recognized that the answer, the answer lied within the church, that the church had the ability, the power from the ground up, the ground roots up, to be able to affect change. And, and he, he recognized it. And so instead of COVID, he, he pivoted over to the church has, has an answer. And, and we see that lived out, fleshed out with, with partnerships at Love Loop, doing this day in and day out, and then opportunities for all of us to serve together. That, that's why we do <laughs> partnerships with Love Loop. That's why we do Swerve, to build those relationships and to show that Christ truly is the answer, that we are one in Christ. We are one human race in Christ. And that is not more evident than on days when you're standing around serving shoulder to shoulder with other people in the name of Jesus. Amen, church? Amen. Hey, can we give all these folks this panel and you guys can, can jump off and thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Oh, you can just sit right back on the chair. Just put it on the chair. I want to just wrap up. I do want to share some impressions that God placed on my heart from his word as we participated yesterday, um, I, I want to thank again the panel, each and every one, for, for jumping in and being a part to help us to celebrate. Um, Swerve is really a picture of how we can become a reflection, the imitators of God. And God, throughout the week, led me to this passage, and it's out of Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 4 through 10. And here's what it says It says, Because of his great love for us, 
God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and he seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming age, that's our age right now, that he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works so that no one should boast. The, the apostle Paul is talking about this great love that God has for us. And when he's writing about it, he's, he's really talking about how this great love was displayed when Christ came and gave his life for us and died for our sins. And notice that he makes it really clear that it wasn't prompted by our virtue or by our good works. We don't do swerve or partner with love Lou in order to earn our salvation. Amen? That's not why we do it. We do it because of what Pastor Beno talked about, to be light. Because we know that when we are the light of Christ, that people see our good deeds and they give praise to our Father who's in heaven. Paul, Paul uses these incredible words to really describe that we have been rescued. He uses words like love and mercy, made alive, grace. He uses kindness. And he, he does all those things. He tells us all those words in order to describe to us that we've been rescued in the most undeserved and unimaginable way through the life and death of Jesus Christ, through his, his sacrifice. Um, this is important because w- whenever we go out and whenever we do good works and whenever we tell people that they, they need to be rescued or that God has come to rescue us, one of the things that come to our mind is, well, I, I didn't know I needed to be rescued. I didn't know my, my life was, was in peril. In their mind, there's no immediate need, immediate danger for them that they're facing. But the scripture tells us, Paul tells us, that every one of us is in need of rescue because we are all dead in our sins, dead in, in our transgressions, amen? Every one of us. And that we're eternally lost unless God himself intervenes on our behalf. And that's exactly what he did. It tells us in the scriptures that God mapped out this plan before the creation of time, that since God's justice couldn't just be set aside, that God chose a substitute to stand in our place, to take on our punishment, punishment that we deserved. And we see in the scriptures that Jesus was born for this very reason. He left heaven and he he came to earth in order to to rescue and restore those who were lost. Um, This idea of restoring that was was lost or that which is without value, it's something that we we get to see um, over and over. Um, Swerve. We got asked about the t-shirts that we were wearing. They're old t-shirts. We didn't make new t-shirts this year. But we got asked about our old t-shirts by some different people and say, what what does swerve mean? It just means we're serving out in the community. And they said, okay, I get it. I get serve, but but what about the W? What does the W mean? Somebody specifically asked me that yesterday. What does the W mean? And I said, at the very beginning, we used to do this on a Sunday morning. We would... We would cancel Sunday morning services and we would go out into the community and we would take our Sunday morning service and replace it with a service-oriented outreach on Sunday morning. It was pretty, pretty incredible. And when we initially started, it just meant swerving from our normal Sunday routine to serve whoever, wherever, doing whatever for Jesus. Amen? Whoever, wherever, doing whatever for Jesus. That was our goal at the very beginning. And it, it continues to be our goal. And really, you, you saw that kind of flesh out. Um, different projects were in place, and as you heard, all of a sudden, a Bradford pear tree got you know, split up, go figure, um, <laughs> got split up, it was just laying in somebody's yard, and all of a sudden, the project for Jared became cutting down that tree and clearing it out of that individual's yard, whoever, wherever, doing whatever needs to be done in the name of Jesus. And uh, Carrie and I got to experience this underneath the leadership of, of Laura, when she was leading that, that garden area. Um, our project required boxes. We were laying down and making these just beautiful wide mulch paths, but they were putting down cardboard box below it first. And so when we ran out of box, we had to go out and find more boxes at different places in order to lay the mulch over the top of it. And so Carrie and I, my wife and I, we set out to go get some boxes and we went to different places. We went, tried to go to Ikea. It was like Fort Knox. They keep their boxes all locked up. So we weren't able to go there. We went to Quick Trip and got some boxes there. And then we went to Aldi's, but then we found a jackpot at the Family Dollar Store. 
We pulled up my truck at Family Dollar Store, and we, we, we got it, and it was just, it was, it was a jack, a gold mine of big boxes for us to be able to use. The only problem was, the only way to access those boxes was by getting in the dumpster. <laughs> and so there I was, getting off the back of my truck bed <laughs> into, this, into this dumpster, and they're, they're, they're Carrie and I were, right? Pastor at Gateway Christian Church, and there I am in the dumpster, just people looking at me, and I'm just shoveling out boxes, right? In dumpster diving for Jesus at that moment is what I was, is what I was doing, yeah. <laughs> and for me, it was one of those moments where God did remind me that I was in the dumpster, that he dove in for me, that there wasn't anything that he wasn't willing to do, any place he wasn't willing to go in order to dive in and go after me and to dive in and go after us, amen? Jesus dove in to rescue us and to restore us. When nobody else could see our worth or value, Jesus saw purpose and eternal value in us and he went after us. Jesus Jesus made a way and did everything he could Everything you could to rescue and restore us. And listen, when we choose, when anyone chooses not to receive what Christ has done, then they choose to bear the penalty of their sins upon themselves. They're choosing to say, I, I got this on my own, God. I I'll face whatever consequences. And Jesus says, you don't have to. I bear those con consequences for you. You don't have to do it. But, but folks do. But many folks, and many folks in here, you, you chose to allow Jesus to rescue you and to restore you. And that happens... We become these living examples of what God's extravagant grace can do in our lives. Amen, church? I mean, we're supposed to be. Verse 10 tells us this. It says, we are God's handiwork or masterpiece, handcrafted by him, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Coming back to that verse. And we see that, we see that in this passage Paul is reading, really some of we know that God invites us. He even, he even expects us to join him in his good work. This is how we become imitators of God as dearly loved children, as we reflect his heart to see people rescued, to see lives and communities restored into the image, into the image of God. And so they could show off his incomparably great riches of, of grace. We are rescued, yes, but we are, we are also to be rescued rescuers, amen? That is how we reflect the image of God. We are to be rescued rescuers. Somewhere along the way, we've bought into the idea that God only uses perfect people. That's not true. Take a look up here. Look at the pages of the Bible. God doesn't use perfect people. He uses broken people so that his light can shine through their brokenness. He uses rescued people to reach back out to those who are lost and need to be rescued. And when we see, when we're willing to do that, when we're willing to do that, we begin to reflect the life of Christ. Someone who was hands-on, someone who cared for the needs that were around him and someone who rushed in to meet those needs. We get to partner, and I wanna share one more thing before we go. We get to partner with a, a family here at Gateway, I don't know if you've noticed, if you've driven around the church, but you might have noticed an RV parked around back. And this is a family, this is Micah and Justine Foreman. Micah and Justine Foreman serve with a, a missionary organization called Scriptures in Use, or SIU. And what they do is they leverage these oral cultural tools in order to share the gospel in a way that is most relatable and well-received by the cultures that they're sharing the gospel with. They actually train leaders within that community to share the gospel. And so they believed in this mission so much and so deeply that about a year and a half ago, they sold their house. Um, they bought an RV with their, their three kids, and now they travel on mission with SIU from city to city because they recognize that a lot of, a lot of folks... A lot of folks are moving to city centers. People, international people, are moving to the city centers in order to make and to find a life for themselves. And so they're working here in St. Louis. They just arrived this past week. They're working here in St. Louis with some Bosniak leaders and some African leaders in order, in order to share with the 70,000 plus Bosniak and, and African Muslims that live in, in our St. Louis area. They've come to our city to love our city well. 
and we get to partner in a small way with Micah and Justine by simply allowing them to hang out on a lot, plug into our, <laughs> plug into our water and plug their power into our church. And, and prayerfully, prayerfully, hopefully you'll get a chance to meet them here on a Sunday morning and get to celebrate their mission, maybe invite them out to lunch and really just encourage them as they're gonna be here through July and August here on campus serving. Can we give God praise for Micah and Justine the calling? It's so cool to be a part of that in such a small, small way. And I, I look at Swerve and then I look at Micah and Justine and I look at our ability to partner and it just reminds me of this. This is another way that God has prepared these beautiful works in advance. I love the picture of that. It's like God has, God has an X marked out all over St. Louis, all over this place in church. It's just an X marked out. And he's just, he's just waiting you, waiting for you and me to step onto that X and discover the gold mine of blessing and purpose and understanding and grace that he has for us as we step into that spot and just dig deeply into it. And may we be a people who reflect the image of God and recognize he has those places mapped out, prepared in advance for you, for you, today, for you. I want to tell you one of the biggest X's that he has marked off is the cross. And there might be some of you here this morning that have never received Jesus. You, you still think that you have to clean yourself up and be perfect in some way before you come to Jesus. And you don't realize he came after you. He came after me. <laughs> and, and there's no amount of cleaning yourself up that you could do to already earn the love of God that he has for you. He loves you as much as he can love you. And he's just waiting for you to step into that spot, X, the cross, to come to him. And I want to say this morning, if you've never received Jesus, don't wait another second. There's no reason to wait another second to try to clean yourself up. You come to Jesus today and you allow him, you allow him from the inside out to make you, to shape you, to create you, forge and fashion you into the image of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet? I'm going to pray. And then we're going to sing. And I think there might be someone in here that's ready to give their life to Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and hear this morning of the wonderful, wonderful, marvelous deeds that you are accomplishing in our world and in our lives. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father, that you'd allow us to see some of the fruit of that. Maybe there's an individual here that recognizes they need to say yes to Jesus. And I pray, Father God, that in their hearts right now, they would make that confession. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I receive him as my personal Lord and Savior. And I pray, Father God, you give them the, the great courage to follow up that confession, to come and to say, I, I want to lay my life down in baptism and be raised to new life, to know that my sins are forgiven and I have a clean slate through Christ Jesus, that today, Father God, they, they know that today could be the day of salvation for them. And Lord, for each one of us who are believers sold out for you, help us to step into that spot that you have marked out, you prepared in advance for us to be a part of. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the church said together, amen.
For a few moments, if you need to talk, I'd love to connect with you. If you want to find Lucas and get connected um, to Love Lou throughout the year, he would love to talk to you. And I want to say, X Mike marks the spot. Hey, go find it, church. God bless you guys. We'll see you all next week.